family it's color week this week so here uh, so we are here today to talk about color so color is a very exciting topic uh, Chinese brush painting is known for having ink but also there's quite a lot of color work that's done in Chinese brush painting so it's good to know what the different color options are and there's so many options out there that it can get a little overwhelming so we're just trying to highlight some of our most iconic color options and talk about the pros and cons of each one so why don't we go ahead and get started so the first thing i like to highlight well let's before before i actually get started let's talk about the color paradox all right so the color paradox goes like this it doesn't matter what kind of color you use until it does <laughs> okay so that's the color paradox so what does that mean that basically means that if you are not that clear about what you're trying to do and you just want to get into the use of color then it doesn't really matter you have a lot you have an extra palette color watercolor set hanging around go ahead and try it you have some tube watercolors around Go ahead and try them. Um, but the more specific you're trying to get and the more specific your goals are, then it becomes important what kind of color you're using. So every color that we sell uh, at OAS has been tested on rice paper and has been tested in the wet mounting process. So we know how all the colors perform in those sort of very critical functions. We know that their vibrancy on rice paper, we know how well they blend on rice paper, uh, we know how, how well they show textures, and we also know how color fast they are when you prepare a painting with wet mounting because these are all traditional processes that are uh, definitely associated with traditional Chinese painting. So it is important when we're promoting a color system or a color option that we know how it performs in that regard. So. We, we try to mention this in all the color descriptions, but if you ever have any questions, you can go ahead and send us an email or give us a call and ask us uh, specific questions about whatever color options you're considering. So, on to the first color option. This is These are the OAS Ideal Companion Watercolor Set. They come in eight colors and 12 colors, okay? So, what I like about these is that they are super convenient and affordable and the colors work very well on rice paper. So um, as a color option, they're quite strong. The colors that come in here are, they're, they're, they're semi-moist, which means that it doesn't take as long to get these ready for painting. In fact, you can just open this up and take a wet brush and just brush uh, uh, some uh, a wet brush against here and it'll pick up color just fine. That being said, uh, it does come with a mixing brush, so when you have extra time, uh, it is uh, nice to take some time to prepare the colors and we'll show you a little bit about how we do that uh, later. So these are the Ideal Companion watercolor set. Again, they're super convenient. Um, if, if you are like, uh, we're running around here running a business, and so we have these around because sometimes we just have like five minutes to, to paint something. So uh, if, we, if we have these around uh, in a short period of time, we can uh, uh, work with color with these, and um, they're, they're great for that. So they're great for traveling. They're great for people who are in a hurry and are having difficult uh, time uh, finding things to paint. So are there any downside? What I would say is um, of all of our options, they are the least reliable when it comes to wet mounting. That doesn't mean that you cannot wet mount paintings uh, with these. We do it all the time. It's just that if we are gonna have color issues in wet mounting, um, sometimes uh, these will, will present issues more often than other colors. So. Um, we don't have as much confidence in their color fastness as other color options, but if you, you know, are just getting started and you want to get started with color, a lot of uh, people don't get to wet mounting right away. You know, it's a process that takes some, has a little bit of a learning curve. So if you aren't wet mounting your paintings, these are great colors and you can, um, you know, uh, even if you paint something you like, you can use a glue stick and put it on some backing paper and put it in a frame or uh, uh, 
put it on a piece of cardstock and make a card out of it. So a lot of different options for doing finished paintings uh, with this. So these are the Ideal Companion uh, watercolor sets. Comes in both eight and 12 colors. The next color option that I'm gonna highlight is this. These are, in a, in, we'll call this category Chinese tube watercolor sets. Okay, so uh, many of you have heard of the very iconic Marie's brand. Uh, this brand uh, by uh, Yasutomo we actually prefer. Uh, it's called Authentic Chinese Watercolors, and the reason why we prefer them over the Marie's is their vibrancy is similar to the high-end Western watercolors that have kind of become the preferred color option for teachers like Ning Ye and Mayi Futterman. So if you are looking for a budget option that has similar color performance, um, you can use this uh, authentic Chinese watercolor set. Um, it comes in tubes and it also has a couple colors that are iconic to um, Chinese painting. If you have seen like traditional Chinese landscape painting, you'll notice this sort of mineral green and mineral blue. This color set has uh, those colors represented in here. So uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve color tube options, and the colors uh, uh, map to uh, the colors in this set map to the colors in the Marie's set, although they're not exactly the same hue-wise, but they're similar and they, and they have the same names. So this is the color set. So, oh, before we go on, another advantage of the Ideal Companion set is that it needs a, no additional accessories, okay? So these work inside the palette. You don't need like a flower plate or stackable dish. And so this is also a strength of the Ideal Companion set. That being said, if you're gonna work with tube watercolors, then it's very, very nice for you to have accessories. For example, we have this flower plate, and uh, this is great for working with small amounts of color. So you can just uh, take a little bit of this color, squeeze it out onto a flower plate, and use a mixing brush to add some water to it and get it to the right consistency that you need uh, ready for painting. So these flower plates are very good. We have them both in this small size, and we have them in a larger size as well, and these are nice. We have both porcelain and plastic. Porcelain is nicer to work with. It feels um, uh, there's a better, more satisfying quality when you brush your brush against it, and it's also easier to clean. Uh, we have plastic uh, blo blossom palette sets as well, and those are cheaper. The, they, you don't have to worry about breaking them uh, as much uh, because they're more durable and they are lighter for travel. So those are how you decide between the different types of accessories as far as flower plate goes. So that is the uh, Chinese tube watercolor set and its corresponding accessory, the flower plate. So the next thing we're gonna talk about are Chinese chip colors. So the two that I'm gonna highlight first because they are in some ways the most important are Chinese chunk yellow and the vermilion. Okay, so the reason why we're gonna talk about these kind of separate is that even in uh, color systems that are not using the rest of the Chinese chip colors, so uh, for example, these teachers like Ning Ye and Mai Yi Futterman, their color systems still rely, even though they're using a lot of tube Western watercolors like the ones from uh, Windsor Newton, they are still relying on the Chinese chunk yellow and the Chinese vermilion chips because uh, they are the best color um, options for these two colors and they're used quite often uh, and in quite large amounts for flower painting and all kinds of other paintings. So these are the Chinese chunk yellow and the Chinese vermilion. And then of course there's all other kinds of uh, uh, Ch other hues of Chinese uh, chip colors. There's you know red and indigo and and they usually come in two different types of containers depending on the source. So sometimes you'll get them in this little plastic bag. Other times they will come in a box like this. So where, what we like to do for, as far as uh, Chinese chip colors go is we like to store them and use these stackable porcelain dishes for them. So what we do is we empty some chips out into a stackable dish. We spray a little bit of water on it. There's some glue on these chips and the chips will stick to the 
uh, a dish and then they will live there permanently. So you can add water to them and you can paint uh, and draw color directly from the dish or um, you can um, uh, pull small amounts out of the dish onto a flower plate if you're going to mix the color with something else. All right, so these are the stackable porcelain flower dishes and the Chinese chip colors. So one other potential issue that I want to talk about uh, as far as the ideal companion watercolor sets go is the replacement of individual colors. So you will see that uh, these palettes are just, they are complete in themselves. They have all the colors inside of them and these, these colors or refill colors are not sold separately. So when you run out of say yellow. Uh, but you have all the rest of the colors left that the only option for you to get more of this kind of yellow is to buy another set. So that is a little bit problematic for people who paint a lot. Uh, but, um, you know, you can, you can uh, do all kinds of things. Uh, you know, I just like to challenge myself to use up the color palette um, um, by shifting color palettes. So, for example, you know, uh, this like yellow orange and red are often used uh, for flower paintings, okay? So there's a lot of flowers that use that color palette, but also we have this sort of um, uh, uh, light green, dark green, and sky blue, and that color palette can also be used for doing colors like iris or violets or things like that. So, um, you know, I, I like to just challenge myself to not get in a rut as far as using color and that way you can uh, make these go as far as possible. But, uh, but you know, they're fairly affordable. So if you have to replace all the colors to get uh, one or two that are running out, then that's just, uh, you know, that's just one of the characteristics of the ideal companion set as an option. All right. So the other thing about this, uh, about these uh, Chinese tube watercolor sets is that at this point, replacement of the color, uh, in, of individual colors is not um, an option. So we do not sell individual tubes of these. We do sell individual tubes of the Marie's watercolor sets. So you can always, if you run out of uh, this color, you can always replace it with a similar size tube of the Marie's color and it'll be the same name. Color-wise, they're not exactly the same, but they're quite similar. So if you're not that picky, that is a replacement option for you. But uh, you will find that uh, these colors as a set are very inexpensive. So again, um, getting more of them to replace a handful of colors is not going to be um, not going to be that cost prohibitive. All right. So that is one other aspect of this uh, uh, Chinese watercolor set. All right, so the last watercolor, uh, the, the last color option we're going to talk about are Western watercolors. So these are uh, Windsor Newton artist watercolors, and they are the preferred brand of teachers like Ning Ye and Mai Futterman. So let's talk a little bit about mm, the fact of, that these are Western and they are not traditional. All right, so. I think it's important to understand that China as a country only fairly recently formatted its economy in a way that um, they started getting access to the most modern things. So that, as far as China goes, is fairly recent. So a lot of the reasons why certain things were selected for traditional Chinese painting doesn't have anything to do with the fact that they are the best options. They were selected because they were what is available. So we've uh, gone on um, teaching exchanges to mainland China and my father has brought these colors along with them. And every single Chinese master that we worked with who tries these colors absolutely loves them and asks where they can get them and asks how much they cost. And so of course, they're not traditionally Chinese, and there is a strength and a weakness to that because 
If you are in love with the traditional Chinese color palette, that's great. So if you see these uh, older books that are published and you see these mineral greens and all these greens that are, that are found in these traditional Chinese paintings, that's great. We have those colors as color options for sure in, in the other color sets, but uh, a lot of these more Western watercolors are more realistic. They are softer, they blend better, they aren't as harsh. And so, you know, uh, I think pa uh, painters like Ning Ye have sort of established their niche as showing kind of like the fruits of the cultural combinations of East and West. So this is one example of that. So we have some traditional, uh, we have basically a color system that uses some Chinese chip colors like the vermilion and the yellow and then quite a few Western watercolors, and then also some uh, Japanese colors like the Sakura White, uh, some other colors from Europe, um, you know, like some Da Vinci White uh, and things like that. So, so these are all colors that were selected for their merits and how well they work on rice paper and how well and versatile they are for a lot of the subjects that we use for Chinese brush painting. So that's basically it for our color exposition. We're gonna uh, follow this up with a couple of short little demonstrations on color blending and brush loading techniques. And also we're going to show you um, some painting with each of these color options kind of side by side. So you can see how we work with them more practically and how they look when uh, they're shown right next to each other in a side by side comparison, all right? So thanks a lot for listening. Make sure you like and subscribe uh, if you want to see more content like that and stay tuned because we are going to the painting demonstrations right now all right so uh, we are I'm going to show you a little bit about how I prepare the ideal companion set for uh, painting when I have a little bit of extra time now um, when I'm really short on time the ideal companion set is kind of is good because these colors here are all semi-moist, so I can just take kind of a damp brush and brush my uh, brush up against it, pick, cu pick up color, and start painting. So if I'm like really only have five minutes, then, uh, then that's a good way to do it. And these colors are not completely dry. They just, uh, they, they uh, are uh, already slightly softened, so this is a good color set to do that when you're in a hurry. But when I have a little bit more time, this is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna pick up some water with my main brush, and then I'm just gonna add a couple drops here. And the more diluted the color is, the more water I'm gonna add. So you can see I've added like three drops to the yellow and a couple drops to the orange and a couple drops to the red, okay? So now after that, I'm gonna take this mixing brush, which is included in the set, and then I'm gonna go ahead and start just working the water in here and having it pick up color so that I have kind of a dilute, diluted mixing that color so that it's ready for painting, okay? And the more intense the color I want, the more I'm going to sort of spend time to, to make sure that the liquid in here has completely picked up as much color as I'm going to need to paint. So I'm going to work that around in there. Again, the yellow I'm wanting a little to be a little bit more diluted than the other colors. So I put more water in there. So I'm going to go rinse this mixing brush out. And then I'm going to go to the orange. So the rule about working with colors in these palettes like this is you can feel more confident contaminating small amounts of color into the different chambers so long as you are putting lighter color inside of darker color, not really the other way around. So if I were to actually be loading this, I could take some of the yellow and put it into the orange and that would be okay but I wanna to try to avoid taking the orange and putting it into the yellow. So as I'm loading, if I load from light to dark, then I'm gonna be able to go ahead and um, do it quicker and not have to worry about washing my brush every single time. 
but since we're gonna we're doing this in a especially neat way well, I'll go ahead and rinse get the color out and now I'm gonna do my red And you know, I want to just, whenever you're doing something that's good, just be aware, pay attention, um, and you'll, you'll see details like I'm mentioning, and maybe even some that I'm not mentioning, and then you can go to, you know, our uh, YouTube video and make comments about, oh, I was doing this, and I, and I noticed this, and, and you can add uh, to everybody's understanding. Um, but I, I don't, uh, I want everybody to not underestimate uh, your ability to just learn things by doing so long as you are aware when you're doing them. All right, so those are the colors. They're ready to go. And I'm going to go ahead and load my brush. Okay, so I'm using a large OAS large flow brush. Okay, and um, I'm going to go ahead and the first thing I'm going to do is after I rinse off the brush, I'm going to actually uh, take the excess water out. So I can do that in two different ways. You can see as I paint the brush against the side of my water bowl, so long as I'm not dipping it back into the water, the water is coming off. See, so the, so the brush is getting drier and drier. If I'm working with a double Schwen, uh, that might be enough to take the excess water off. If I'm working with a single Schwen, I'll actually go and take the excess water off by brushing it against a paper towel. Now the brush is very dry, and then I will go ahead and reload the water about a third of the way up. So then I've got pretty much a dry brush with the water loaded as a color. So then what I'm gonna do next is go to my colors and I'm gonna load them lightest to dark. So I'm gonna start here with the yellow. And then I'm gonna get a little bit of the orange. And on the very tip, I'm gonna get the red. All right, so if you can see there, I don't know if you can actually see that, but can you see that the colors are loaded in stages, right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually take my brush to the blending plate and I'm gonna blend the colors so that you can see there that they're kind of like now gonna fade into each other. So then after I do that, I will reload the darkest color on the tip because the fading affects that color the most, all right? So now I'm ready to do my stroke, okay? So I'm just going to set the pressure and I'm gonna lower the boom and finish. All right, so you can see here that we've got the darker color that fades into the sort of orange and then it gets into the yellow. So that's kind of like the basic technique. So I'm gonna do that again and you'll see what it's like when I have um, the second stroke without reloading the color. You can, you can see I get a little, something a little bit more subtle. All right, so I'm gonna rinse my brush off and we're gonna try that again. And I'm gonna see, so when I look at the stroke, I can see that I got a nice little water area here. So the water was loaded effectively, but I kind of want more color throughout the stroke. So this time I'm gonna try to load the colors deeper into the brush. Okay, so again, I'm gonna go to the yellow. This time I'm being a little bit more assertive, getting that color deeper into the brush. Then I'm gonna get the orange. And then with the tip, I'm gonna get the red. And I'll go ahead and blend the brush. And then reload the darkest color at the tip. All right, so then I'll go ahead and do the stroke. I set the pressure and I come down. One more time, set the pressure.
All right, so now we're gonna show this stroke again, this time from this top angle. All right, so I've gone ahead and loaded my brush and then I'm just gonna set the pressure and lower the boom. One more time without reloading the brush and seeing if we get some sort of subtler colors. So this is kind of like the signature stroke of Chinese brush painting or, or some of the singular aspects where we get a single stroke showing multiple colors that sort of fade to something that is pretty close to white. All right, so if you can just do this uh, and you can do them in other, like different directions. Okay, and as you can see as I paint the color gets more and more subtle. So you can see and you can start to get a feeling of deciding when you need to reload your brush. All right, so we get some moisture in here. Load the brush from lightest to dark. Blending the brush. I'm going back and picking up the darkest color again. And then setting the pressure, doing the stroke. All right. Hi. We're going to talk about the color today. There are all different ways that you can choose um, for uh, color choices. And uh, we're going to demonstrate today with four choices. And um, depends on your budget and your preference on the convenience, how to do these. All right, we'll get started. We are using, uh, the paper we're using is our practice shun and the small sheets. And then the first um, one that we choose is our companion set, which the merit is convenient as well as budget friendly. There are two palettes that you can choose from. We have this eight color set. And then we have this 12 color set. Personally, the, the pricing is very close. The 12 color set, you have more choices on variation to choose. And I will demonstrate both of them today. The merit of being convenient is that we can literally use right out of the palette. We don't need additional uh, accessories. Um, the only thing we, I'm using is that a little um, mixing plate so we can soften the color. I'm using the um, OAS Superflow so you can see very clearly what uh, how I do it. The first one, I'm going to go use the eight color set, which will use the green right off the palette and the blue and the black. One thing, a lot of times people have trouble with moisture, moisture control, so make sure the body is dry and then the tip is wet. So we are using the green out of the palette. If the color is a little bit sticky, and then you use the mixing brush come with the palette, just soften it up. So I'm loading about, I would say, 
one eighth the brush tip because the color has a tendency pushing further up. We, in order to achieve the transparency of your stroke, you don't want to lo um, load it too deep. The second one I'm loading is the blue. And then the last one, I'm tip the black. And then I soften it up with my palette. So here goes the right leaves. And then I reload for my left leaf. Again, three different color and tip with the black and soften. This is straight out of the palette. And sometimes I would like to soften the green a little bit. So I literally uh, use the green a little bit brown and then blue and the black and mix. And then we'll see if the color is different. So you can see the color now is softer. All right, this is our eight color sets. Now I'm rinsing my brush. I'm going to use the 12 color sets. So I'm moving this one away. And um, there are two greens in this palette. And I used the one closer to the, to the um, blue. It seems a little bit softer than the other one. The other one is more blue. So I low, and I have the blue, I got plus, and I mix. Green again, blue, and then black. So this is great for traveling because one palette, you have 12 colors and then you don't need much other things to go with it. So you can see the two color from the eight color set and then the 12 color set is quite different. And now I wanted to Soften the green, so what I do is I use the green. And then mix it a little bit with ochre, and then blue and black, and then I soften. We'll see if it's different. So these color is a little bit different. All right, now we finished the companion set. Before we move on, I can see that you are directly loading your brush into different um, color palettes. Can you talk about the issues related to that and how you do that? Okay, so uh, we decide to use minimum accessory. So you can always take the color out into a, like a flower play to make it a cleaner use, but then you add additional things. So for this set, we wanted to be using as little equipment as we can for traveling purposes. And then the drawback is when you dip it into the palette itself, sometimes 
all the other color get mixed into the um, different uh, colors so they don't they don't keep it as pure as um, you would like to what I do is at the end of the painting I just use a very small rinse faucet water I turn it on very small let it rinse through the top and then it's very easily then the all the dirtiness that you have mixed with other color will come clean are there fewer issues when you get the lighter colors into the darker colors versus the other way around um yes why are you are doing it but then once you rinse it then it goes back to originally but then because Whenever you load color, you always load the light first um, into the dark because what you want to do is you want to make sure that your light color is still showing off because if you load the dark color first, then load the light over the dark, then it won't show up when you paint. Okay.